Hello everybody, welcome back. This is my very second last epoch video. So the last video I made was a tutorial on how to get started on your loot filter. Uh, so if any of you watched that, as just a quick update, uh, I've seen loot filters that are a lot longer than this. For example, I could be including idols, but I don't wanna do that, so it'll be fine. Um, I'm not sure how well the loot filter works, if I'm missing something, as this is the very first time that I've tried to make, like, for the most part, a complete loot filter. There might be people out there that are, might see this and think, like, this is not at all long enough or something. I don't know. To me, it should be fine. I'm hiding all normal magic and rare items. Um, yeah, that's fine. I just, for whatever reason, I'm going to start doing the hiding items thing around level 25. Um, meanwhile, I'll show normal and magic items to specific gear that I can use the Rune of Discovery on. Um, so yeah. And then I'm hiding all items from all the different classes that obviously I cannot equip. Um, Though, of course, if any of these items have an affix that I'm looking for, it should still show up for me, most likely. So, if this all works, then yay. I've got my specific gear. And, yeah. So, let's go ahead and start with the build. The skills I'm going to be specializing in and the points I'll be putting into the skills and everything. Um, now, I do have a build online that I pretty much relied on to make this one. It's actually the same build. It's literally their build, so for any of you who are wondering if this is like an original build for me, in some ways, yes, in other ways, no. It's not because how I'm doing it right now is that I literally found this build online and I'm following it. The reason why it's also original is that when I first got this game in January, uh, I'm recording um, December 30th right now, so almost a year ago, I my very first character was the Acolyte, and I didn't search up any builds. The very first skill I specialized in was Rip Blood, and then I either did Bone Curse or Transplant. I think I did Bone Curse. But anyways, I ended up specializing in literally all of these, I think except for Death Seal. I like had just made it to like level 40 on that character and, and then I stopped around there. Um, but I pretty much did this exact build, just I didn't do anything with the gear. I had some necrotic damage boosts I'm pretty sure because I know I specialized in doing necrotic damage. So yeah, for those of you who are wondering what build I am using. You can go to, not the build planner, though I'm probably going to start using that pretty soon and maybe like really try and come up with my very own builds without looking at anyone else's just to kind of see what I come up with. I'm going to do that with the mage. Um, I think any of you interested in a beginner's guide to the spell blade, I have a really, really good video for that because I know absolutely how I build my spell blade. So yeah, it's pretty cool. Um, I think it's this one from Pinching Loaf. So let me just, it's actually not that one. So I'm gonna go ahead and search Rip Blood. And I'm, I'm just doing this just to show you all which build I am specifically using. It works for me. I've tried it and it's, just so happens to be exactly what I was already doing when I first picked the Acolyte. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to properly credit the person who came up with this build. I went onto their YouTube channel. Very, very cute. <laughs> I just love this person. Uh, and also Boardman21, if any of you know that channel. I really like, um, I think, Lizard RPG. There's a few others that I've also watched, but I, I can't remember off the top of my head right now. But anyways, I am technically using this guide 
So if you'd like to look at the skill points there, you can. But literally how spot on it was for my very own idea from like a year ago, I feel confident that I can already walk you through all this. And I'm gonna run different points than theirs. Their Rip Blood does not put any points into Crimson Flood. I'm going to be putting points into Crimson Flood. So, yeah, now I'm staring at it. I'm just gonna exit that, okay. And the very first thing I'm gonna do is this one. Also, I think more than doing like a build with you all, I'm just gonna do, this is gonna be more like a playthrough, but I just wanted to give some background on what this playthrough is. Um, but yeah, this is my very first point. After that, personally, I like to go straight for necrotic damage conversion or whatever, so that I'm ready. And then I'll just start building from there. Um, yeah, and if any of you wanna know exactly the points or generally the points, you can either skip to the end whenever that is. This might be a series, this might be like my playthrough part one and I'll keep going. Um, also, FYI, I am going to be just listening to music for the most part while playing. And if you don't like my music, no worries. You can just click off the video. Um, or you can mute my video. Uh, I'll try and put timestamps along the video so you can skip. And during those times, like when I reach level 4, I can give you an update in the points that I'm doing. Uh, stuff like that. Similar to Boardman21's style of video, only I don't have video editing skills. I mean, I do, but it's very difficult to do the video editing with my current software and everything. It takes a very long time. I can do it, but it just takes, it honestly takes too long with the resources I have. In the future, if I get better resources, I will absolutely be editing these videos to make them like really concrete so that's why we're doing a playthrough instead of like a guide because if I did a guide honestly I would do pretty much how Boardman 21 does his guides um, but yeah so that's the first thing I'm gonna do with rip blood this ability here and I might explain what everything does as we play because I, I really want to get started soon but I think the very next thing I'm gonna get is Bone Curse. And with Bone Curse, uh, what am I going for? I'm gonna be going for Mark for Death. And then after that, I'm gonna be going for this Kill Threshold. And then I'll be getting this, after you cast Bone Curse, you apply Bone Curse on hit for the next few seconds. And then once I finish all of that, I'm gonna finally click on this ability that turns Bone Curse into a single tar target ability only when you first cast it. However, all the buffs, or debuffs, I should say, that Bone Curse gives, including that kill threshold, have a permanent duration. So, it's very, very cool. Uh, if you're wondering what my main damage ability is, it's actually not Rip Blood, it's Transplant. Uh, and then it becomes like a primary slash secondary damage ability once you, no, not Drain Life, once you get Death Seal. Um, but yeah. And any of you who are interested in all of the stuff about Death Seal and maybe this whole build entirely, definitely check out, I believe, Pinching Loaf? definitely check out Pinching Loaf's YouTube video on this build. Very, very good video. I love his energy. Like I said, super cute and very informative. But yeah. And then we've got Reaper Form, which Reaper Form, I think we're working our way up to Swiftness. I forget the exact order that I did this one. I don't really want to look at it right now. I definitely, oh, I went for this, that Reap and Transplant no longer share a cooldown. That was the very first thing I went to, because that's amazing. After that, I think I worked my way up this way. 
as well as putting some points into the crit multiplier once I had more crit chance. So let's officially get started. Um, I'll probably put on my music if I don't feel like talking anymore. But for now, yeah, we can play. Hopefully the audio from the game isn't too loud. I know the birds and the squawking and everything. Dang, and the whole reason I played Acolyte was because I wanted to hear all of her dialogues. But I want this playthrough to be accurate to how I usually play through the game, which would be me listening to music. So I don't know. And of course, I want to create an enjoyable experience for whoever might ever watch this. But I also just want to play the game like the way I always play it, you know? <laughs> You can do some dodging if you want. It really doesn't matter. You can just stand and use rip blood. Hopefully... Oh, by the way, for those of you who don't know this, that loot filter that I set up, or that you might have set up as well, um, if you press and hold X, it, the whole loot filter is canceled. So you can see all items, how they normally appear when you never have a loot filter, if that all makes sense. To make items just disappear altogether, you can press the button Z and then you just simply tap it again if you want items to be visible. So if you ever oops, if you ever see a shining item on the ground but you can't pick it up and there's no words, it's probably because you have Z pressed down and you just need to press Z again. So yeah. I also thought about if I wanted to play like how I normally do, which is I have the global chat on and I'm like talking to people because there's a lot of lovely people to chat with on this game. However, there does sometimes end up being conflict, toxicity from certain members that you end up having to block, stuff like that, that I just figured it's not worth the risk for a video. So here's a very first treasure chest. I like to go for as many of these as possible. At the beginning of the game, I personally don't think it hurts to just pick up everything. Greetings, I Carl. do. Care to see my wares. I I care to see your wares. Like <sighs> I do tend to like to go here cuz I might be able to buy like one thing. Later, I want to start having gold to buy these runes of shattering glyphs or uh, runes, obviously runes, sorry. Um they cost 2000 gold and that is how you actually are going to get affixes from other items that you want onto your actual gear. Um, Care to see my wares? But yeah, for now, they do tend to sometimes have something decent. And right now, honestly, there's like nothing decent. This has like some armor. It has some forging potential. I might end up using the forging potential. Why not? It, it doesn't hurt. And I don't need two of these. And I'm already wearing the one that has more forging potential. So I'm someone who doesn't like to use summons. That's not 100% true. I, my favorite class in these games is also Necromancer. Um, but when I'm not doing Necromancer, I'm like not doing Necromancer, you know? <laughs> so yeah. Feel my I'm very interested in the Acolyte as a person. I'm hopeful that her character grows through the game. I wouldn't know. I usually play this game on mute. I only remember her dialogue from when I played this like a year ago. I can tell it's the same dialogue that she's still like, her character's still pretty consistent with a year ago, which I like that, especially if she has real growth. I'll have to wait and see if her dialogue changes as the game progresses or if her personality just always is the same. But I think she should learn something from this journey. I'm very curious about it. 
So yeah, as you can see, I mostly just use Rip Blood. Uh, sometimes I like to use Bone Marrow, but for now, I'm just going to keep doing Rip Blood. I know it might seem tedious because it's like you have to hit them one at a time. But once you reach level 4, it becomes AoE and it's really, really good. So I grabbed the armor. I'm leaving the sword. Because I don't really need... Unless if there's a specific affix on the swords that I was looking for. Not really, to be honest. Feel my wrath. I think after I reach a few milestones, I'm gonna start listening to music and just zoning out while I play this game. I know that may seem not very entertaining to some of you. Totally understandable. You can just use the timestamps that are bookmarked and you can just skip to the, the key points. And if you wanna see a little bit of gameplay, you can always just watch for like 20 seconds and then skip to the next, um, what did I call it? Key point, yeah. And I know it might seem like I'm not doing much right now. And that's because I'm not. <laughs> I just wanted to say that. <laughs> I'm gonna read this. For any of you curious about this story. Oh, by the way, I want to do videos on the lore. Personally, I really like the lore of this game. I think the storyline is really good. Some might call it cheesy. Yeah, why not? I don't care. But it's good. Like, it's a really good storyline. It has really good messages that are actually relatable to life. There's a lot of humanity that you can tell that exists. But that's a different video. I'm just going to do the quest. So any of you want to read the dialogue, let me know in the future and I'd be happy to do that. But for now, I'm just going to play how I'm playing lately because I already know the storyline. And if it bugs you about the passive points, it's just because for when I bookmark, I really want people to be able to see what I do because I know people are curious about that. Music is so intense. Oh, and I sing, by the way. <laughs> so yeah, if any of that bothers any of you, whenever I am listening to music and singing, just simply mute the video. Yeah. Or don't watch. Yeah. Okay. Specialize. Here we are in the specialization. So I'm immediately taking this. I'm going to read what it does now. So first I'll start here. So rip blood hits have a chance to create a blood splatter at the target, dealing damage to other enemies around it, but not the original target. Generally, that's like fine, right? Because you already hit the original target with rip blood and now splatter hits the nearby targets. Um, but you can make it also hit the original target too, but that's later. Um, you can also press and hold alt if you'd like to read any of this. Go ahead and pause the video. You can read that yourself. But yeah, I'm going for this one because this gives you a 100% chance to cause blood splatter every single time. Whereas this only is a 20% chance. The reason why that this is such a higher chance is because it comes with more mana. So right now, Rip Blood costs 3 mana. With this, it'll cost 9. So Rip Blood looks like this right now. It's just a single target ability. However, now it does AoE damage, which is honestly so good. But yeah. Oh yeah, and the passive points. Sorry, I just immediately got back into it. And 
honestly, like, either of these is good. I'm gonna go with this one just because it comes with Necrotic Resistance. And I get a damage boost, and then I can do this one later. Also, you can check the damage increase. It's not much, but it went up by, like, a couple. Probably from, like, 27 to 30. Okay, I'm gonna summon my guys. I take back what I said. Like, this is too much. Oh yeah, I should probably heal. Sorry, I get distracted when I talk. So. I lied earlier. I do want my army. <laughs> it just does make it easier, and it goes by a lot faster. Once I get more damage, I won't really need to rely on them, but... And I could get through this without relying on them, but yeah. And also, because I'm doing, um, I think I'm doing hardcore solo. Yeah. How do I check if I'm hardcore? Yeah. Oh, okay, it just says all of it right there. So because I'm hardcore solo, I personally would like to go around and like, and level up as much as I can. So yeah, that's just my own preference. Also, I am gonna start listening to music now, so I will see you all later if you wanna see how I keep progressing. Uh, what am I doing? It's literally, oh wait.
so sad. Like, literally, how it goes from this to this. Just wow. Oh, I love this song. <laughs> this is literally a song about not wanting to go outside or go anywhere. So good.
tell me how it's all my fault You are my best friend and that hasn't changed Wish that we could mend it I had a freak out I tried to reach out and you ignored me Lauren said you were working at the bar Pulling pints for rich guys Okay, so we just reached level seven. I'm going to go ahead and show you what passive points I've been putting, which is the intelligence and necrotic resistance. Maybe 20 is honestly good enough, and maybe if this one gives me more of a damage boost, I could do that already. However, I think I'm okay. I'm trying to think of what points I end up putting next. I think it's the vitality, honestly. So. I think I'm just gonna keep doing the intelligence. Nah, I'll increase the damage on, on this one, just to see. So honestly, you can kind of just put them wherever. If you want more intelligence and necrotic resistance right now, I think that makes total sense. I think right after this, these five points, I'm gonna be putting points into vitality just so that I'm tankier. Oh yeah, the whole point is that I got Bone Curse. So Bone Curse is a an amazing skill. I feel like I, I honestly don't even need the skeletons at this point, but I might as well just hold on to them. So, so yeah, now I can just apply Bone Curse to monsters and they pretty much yeah, they just die. And I think Bone Curse with Harvest is a very good combo. It literally, like, I'll show you, like, Harvest on its own does that. But if you use Bone Curse and then use Harvest, at the beginning especially, it pretty much just kills them, like, in one hit. It is pretty cool. Obviously, you can still use Rip Blood and it still triggers it. But, yeah. Hmm. But yeah, that's all. That was my update. I will see you all when I get to the next milestone. Wishing on a star that you've got new friends. Why don't I look? Answer them, I'm just some girl who broke your heart and wrote a song about it.
So unfortunately, I might end up cutting the video short, depending on my cat. <laughs> but, so we just leveled up and got our level 8 specialization. As you can guess, I'm going to do Bone Curse. Now this is a very interesting time because at level 7, you unlock Bone Curse. At level 8, you get your specialization. At level 9, you get Transplant. It's just it's really really cool um, so I personally am gonna do this I think you could technically wait till level 9 and then specialize in transplant instead but I personally want to go for bone curse first uh, and that's because the sooner I get four points into this the sooner I get mark for death and mark for death I think is just one of the biggest damage boosts you can even get this early on because it literally reduces all enemy resistance by 25%. That's pretty good. Yeah. And as a passive, and I am just going to check with the build. That is something. Passives, I really do rely on builds to decide. I always know which ones I'm interested in. But sometimes I like end up going for stuff that I, I really shouldn't. Um, in their build, I'll go ahead and show it. 
they don't put any points into, um, where is it, this one, but I myself do, and then I just remove those points when I job advance. Um, now that I'm doing hardcore solo and I don't have that much gold, I might not do that. We'll see. Um, but yeah, they do have vitality points. So myself, I'm going to have these. When I first did the Acolyte, I think I put all five points into this one. Or no, I put four points and then one into this one. Because in their build, they only put four points here. And I think that makes total sense because this is exactly 20 points. And I would put eight points into here instead of there because this comes with necrotic resistance. And obviously you're going to be building damage in your build anyways. So you don't really need this damage boost from the passive skill tree. So I think on my own, eventually I would come up with these exact choices as well. But yeah, I myself, I don't know. I don't know when I would have come up with that. Um, so yeah. Who's Navi? Okay. And that's my update. Okay. I'll see you all at the next milestone. Oops. Things too much And then I end up out of touch And feel a lot less real than before I speak a lot of words But tend to say a lot less I'm just a fucking mess And I will shut my bedroom door And as I iron out my brain To speak to ice I'm not sure what to do to get out of this goo that I absorb. How to stop myself though if I know As above so below I'm my own spirit Most of the time I'm scooping on digging Also, it's 6 a.m. now. <laughs> I have not slept. They say there's a war between the man and the woman. I've never felt like this 
before My heart knew that I could And then you take me in And everything in me begins Okay, so this is pretty important, I think, um, converting rip blood to necrotic damage. So personally, I'm going to hold on to this. I don't want to convert this to necrotic damage. However, I want to save a point for when I'm ready. Um, had I already found some items that give me increased necrotic damage, I would go ahead and do it. But since I have not, I'm honestly just going to lose damage at this point if I convert to necrotic right now because this physical increase that I'm getting is no longer going to apply if I got this. So I'm going to just hold on and save this point. I actually don't even need to do this milestone then because I was like, ooh, skill point, time to do this. But I was like, wait, I'm just going to explain how I'm not going to do it yet. Um, but I can explain, after I get another point, I can either start putting points into here, which is going to eventually give me 200% chance of blood splatter, which allows you to cast two blood splatters, and the second one is able to hit the original target, which I think is really, really cool. However, I could also go towards increased speed and reducing the mana cost, as well as increasing the health that you gain, as well as granting yourself some more mana. Honestly, knowing that I'm doing a more, um, defensive strategy, I'm going to go towards these points first. But when I played this on soft core, after I got my second point, I started maximizing on uh, splatter and then when I was ready I got this ability uh, convert to necrotic so that is my plan Okay, I have another milestone to report. I found this Rune of Discovery just now, which is the exact reason I'm hoarding all these normal items. I'm basically gonna be using the Rune of Discovery on these items in hopes of finding like plus one um, to rip blood or whatever. Um, but I'm gonna wait to do that later on when I have a lot more runes. Uh, and then I found this, which comes with some health. That's nice. Yeah. Okay. I love the truth. How everything good in life seems to lead back to you. And every single time I run into your arms, I feel like I exist for Really need to know we are leaving 
Okay, so that was really fast. I ended up finding my very first necrotic damage item. So honestly, I can convert to necrotic damage now. And it should boost it. I don't think it'll decrease it. Um, and if it does, then I guess it was a little too soon. But I think we're good. I honestly, I'm still gonna wait, actually. Okay, maybe not. I, I got some more, actually. Uh -huh. So. Let's see. Cool.
and down. You got yourself some good company now. Hey, kid, you been down.
it's dark out But don't you worry, I'm just being cool like All right. So, that concludes part one to my playthrough. Honestly, I'm just going to immediately start part two. I just want to end this recording so that each part is about an hour of gameplay. Uh, obviously, other players out there can get much farther in one hour. Uh, keep in mind, I'm trying to go a nice pace for not just beginners, but also just like taking my time. I honestly don't care about like trying to get through a game as fast as possible. I like taking my time and enjoying it. Just kind of taking it easy. Uh, I could go faster or whatever, but I think it's enjoyable to just kind of, you know, get in the groove. But yeah, if any of you enjoyed this video, if you're able to watch me the whole time, amazing. I, I'm i glad that I can be entertaining if, if that was possible for anyone out there. Um, if you had to skim through just to kind of like see some updates and to just kind of like see how the characters coming together, um, that's totally cool too. Regardless, I hope that these videos are helpful to beginners or anyone really out there playing this game. You don't have to be like a beginner at RPG, ARPGs, but maybe you're just not quite sure how the Acolyte comes together or this specific one, or you're just curious how I play the game or something. But yeah, I am gonna go now and I will talk to you all later. Take care.